Here we go. Let's make it a good day. We don't have any time for the audience giveaways. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I lost them already. Good morning and welcome to the Jason Shaw. I'm Jace. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another mister and McDonald's employee of the month, Kendall Mark. I know. That's a problem for TV, my friend. How no. you doing? I'm good. I can't stop smiling. This is crazy. It's been so long. I know. I gotta tell you, it was it was uh, it was emotional walking in here and seeing people because all kidding aside, we did the math and it has been two and a half years of roundabout since we had anybody here in the building. We had our studio audience, and you know. Um, I just want to take a moment at the at the top of the show to say why this is a big deal. Look, Fallon and all the big national shows, they've had audiences now for months. But for a show like this, the reason this means, uh, I think it's sweeter for us, is the fact that, you know, when we debuted seven years ago, and I've told versions of the story um, over the years, when, uh, when Fox, the company, wanted to do this show, we really, Jeff and the behind the scenes folks, we really pushed for a daily studio audience. And, and Fox, understandably, because the company doesn't have an apparatus for this. They didn't have a system. We didn't even have chairs. The first audiences sat on the floor. I mean, we didn't have... <laughs> and held hands. <laughs> yeah. but, 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 oh, oh, they sat over there. We had folding chairs. Yes. You know, and look, we embraced, we embraced the slightly Beverly Hillbillies aspect of that. But anyway, in, in this, in this, the, they kind of the the corp folks kind of pushed back, like, oh, "Are we going to do this with security?" And then da 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 da. And we said, "Look, that is what's going to set our show apart. Forget me. Forget the topics. There's a ton of shows that do pop culture, but we said the thing that will make the daily experience different are these people right here. <laughs> uh, truly, truly, the energy, the energy that we get from them, I think, comes through on the show. I think it comes through." So, so for me, so the entire show was built around you. So, uh, and this is the part, uh, and then we'll get to the show. This is the part where I will really compliment the boys, um, uh, Jeff and Ted. W what I don't say enough is this show was built around the audience. The entire, you know this, the structure of the show was built around them. We removed all of that in a day. We got a phone call from Queen Mim, and she said, um, and she said, uh, she said, uh, the show is being put on the shelf. And then, and then we came back, and she goes, oh, and by the way, when you come back, you have to do the show without the audience, and guests, and people. And Jeff and Ted, in one weekend, reformatted the show into what we've seen the past two years. Mm -hmm. So bravo to Jeff and Ted. Seriously. Bravo to Jeff and Ted. 
So uh, thanks to the boys for doing it. Uh, and, and now we're back and I'm so excited. So let's get started for the first time in two and a half years with an audience. It's time for the hot dish. Here we go, everybody. Yeah. Woo. Feels good. Feels good. It was the first blockbuster of the year uh, at the box office this past weekend. Doctor Strange Part 2 dominated theaters this weekend. Before I give you my thoughts, because I saw it yesterday, here's a little look at the trailer. I hope you understand. The greatest threat to our universe. is you. Things just got out of hand. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is the official name. It's just not part two. It earned $185 million. That's the biggest opening so far this year. I got a chance to see it yesterday, and it was horrible. <laughs> Genuinely? Genuinely horrible. Why? Genuinely, genuinely horrible. <laughs> Social, I don't know what I saw. I don't know what I saw. Ask me what the plot is. What's the plot? I have no idea. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't even know. It's something about multiple universes. Then there's this teenager in peril that we meet. I don't know why there's she's a teenager? in- teenager? Uh, she's coming up here. Here's a little bit. Uh, I don't know why she's in peril. She's trapped in another universe with another Doctor Strange. And then we see uh, Wanda from WandaVision. Yeah. She was cool, but she's really mad. <laughs> like, she's <laughs> not in a good mood in this movie. And she's basically evil. Now, this is directed by Sam Raimi. We're talking evil, oh, there's Wanda. Uh, we're talking evil dead uh, Sam Raimi. All kidding aside for two seconds. Here is a parental warning from your old pal, Auntie Jason. This movie isn't for the youngins. It was barely for me. I mean, I'm not kidding. It was, there, it's, it's like a horror movie. It really is, Mar it's a Marvel horror movie. Colin jumped like three times. And then there's some gross killings. And I'm not a prude with this sort of thing. I don't care, you know? Right. But I'm thinking if I'm a parent and I see the Marvel logo, Six. and I'm like, come on, little Timmy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Little Timmy's gonna wet his pants. You know what I mean? He's gonna like, <laughs> the hell is that? Psst. I mean, no, no, it's like, it's sincerely. <laughs> They're imitating my pee noise. Welcome back. <laughs> See what you got, Fox? Now you see why I wanted the audience? Yeah. That guy right there. By the way, Leo, take a shot of that guy. He gets the first ever My Wife Dragged Me to the Show Award. Right there, that's right, yeah. I have a great prize for him. He's, he gets to take home our boss's car. That's right, yes. Now we clap. That got him clapping. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just, I, I, and I don't take any, I don't, I don't, I, I love Marvel, but what I'm, what I'm realizing, this is what I'm realizing. Hmm. This and Moon Knight and the Eternals, I'm not liking this phase of Marvel right now. I'm not liking this, it's the fourth phase, I don't know. It's the fourth phase, I ain't liking it. The angry phase, the it dark is, phase. It is, just, it's just, I don't, it's not enjoyable, right? Mm -hmm. It just, it's not, it wasn't fun. It was, I felt, it was, ugh. And the more, you know how when you eat something, you yeah. eat something and you get that aftertaste and the, the more you go like that, the worse. Colin, we got home three hours later, Colin's sitting on the couch and he goes, oh God, I hated that movie. It was that bad. It was that bad. Mm. Next in the dish. While his movie was dominating the box office, Dr. Strange uh, himself, Benedict Cumberbatch, was busy hosting Saturday Night Live. In his monologue, he paid tribute to his mom ahead of uh, Mother's Day. Look at this. For instance, when I lost my two front teeth, I was worried about being teased. But you said, it's okay. Just try and smile without opening your mouth. <laughs> it's great advice. But it also explains why to this day in every red carpet photograph, I'm smiling like this. <laughs> yeah, this is the first new show after a few weeks off. 
It was more, you know, no Saturday Night Live is perfect. There are very few uh, perfect episodes. This was more funny than not. Mm -hmm. And one of the funnier sketches of the night featured a cast member, Chloe Feynman. You know, she's the one that does Britney. She's really, she's one of my favorite newer ones. Here she is impersonating not celebrities, but other SNL cast members. Look. And people are always asking, what happens when a cast member has to miss a show because they're sick? Well, that's where I come in. I am the show's official understudy. You want to get more intimate with it. You want to do a bigger spread. Okay, spread. Spread as big as you can. Just make people uncomfortable with what you're doing. Well, go and just go. And just... To really capture the essence of a cast member, you have to shadow them as they go about their everyday routines. Yeah, well, I thought it was funny, but during the show, it wasn't on the cue cards. It wasn't on the cue cards. No. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Way to get Some of the cast members even use me as an understudy for their personal lives. Thanks so much for doing this, Chloe. I'm so bad at breakups. Truly, no problem. Hey, pal. Oh, man. I thought I did, too. But I see I was more of a pal, you know? So it's just not going to work out. <laughs> Thanks, pal. <laughs> so good. She's so good. I love her. Mm -hmm. Selena Gomez hosts SNL for the first time uh, this coming Saturday. Their season should be wrapping up. It's May. Pretty it's soon. when shows uh, wrap up their season. Did you see any of it? I watched a couple of things. I agree. I, I liked a lot of it, and some of it I was like, oh, it's a lot funny. Yeah. So, well, the toilet, the reclining toilet was my favorite. It would be your favorite. That, that could be a thing, I'm just saying. Oh. We have a lot more to come. Stay right there. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> The dish isn't over yet. Coming up next, one more dish for the drive home. Find out what daytime icon got quite the snub from the daytime Emmys. Then, people are seeing me in a new commercial, but is it really me? No, it's a stick. We're opening up the Jason Show mailbag. And <laughs> the audience is back and so is game time. And today, we're playing the emoji game. That and more when we return. Welcome back, everyone. Well, one of my favorite things, one of my favorite things about last week uh, tonight with John Oliver is when he puts together montages, montages, poking fun at local news across the country. And last night he had some fun with local newscasters and may the fourth be with you. It's our late night rewind, look. And now, local news shows go to the motions for Star Wars Day. Today is a celebration for all the Star Wars fans. It is May the 4th. Allie, we know how much you love today. and Really you... look forward to it. Listen, I don't mind the movies. I don't like how they took this day and made it this May the 4th be with you, because it's like, uh, but I get it. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Does that do anything better for you? No? Turn it on. I got it on. It's now not... hit the button. Oh, it's gosh. not working. Anyway, should I be attacking these two from the other galaxy? They're... Oh, they're good guys? Harrison Ford, was that huh? Han? 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 Han Solo. Han Solo. Han Solo. That's the guy I was talking about oh, earlier. Oh, an hour later. We got it. And I'd want to be him, because he was cool. Himself. He had the spaceship. Yeah, so cool. And he got all the women. There you go. And he got all the women. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Just go back and watch their faces in unison. Yeah, you perv. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We hate you. We, uh, more <laughs> hot dish. And you know on Mondays we get some help serving it up. Joining me from Hollywood is Brad from TMZ. Hi, Brad. <laughs> Jason, you have your audience back. Right? I know. Brad, they're back. This isn't fake, Brad. Hi. I love it. I'm excited. Yeah, I can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> First up, Travis Scott uh, returns to the stage for the first time since uh, the Astroworld tragedy. Uh, tell us about it. 
Yeah, it's been a while, Jason. I mean, Astro World was back early November, uh, and for the first time, Travis had a public performance. He hit up a nightclub in Miami over the weekend. Uh, he didn't hit the stage until 3 a.m., so he definitely had the crowd support there. Uh, but nonetheless, he did a few songs. He was well received, and I think a lot of people think that this is kind of the beginning of maybe back to a new normal for Travis. A lot feel that hey, he's kind of served his time, if you will. Uh, but that investigation continues into exactly what happened at his Astro World Festival when 10 people in the crowd passed away. Yeah, and I'm certainly not making light of it, but I got to tell you, I'm making fun of myself. This proves how old I am. That whole story, though important, the, the thing that stuck out at me is when you said he didn't hit the stage <laughs> until 3 a.m. I would be well asleep. It oh. doesn't matter who's coming out. They I'm, could resurrect Elvis and I'd go to bed. Brad, I'm basically waking up then. So yeah. <laughs> you and me both. Yes. I feel it, Jason. Next, uh, former Wonder Years star, uh, Fred Savage, fired from the Wonder Years reboot. What happened? This was kind of shocking uh, because number one, people didn't even realize that there were allegations and an investigation going on. Uh, but nonetheless, Fred Savage, he's been the executive producer of the new Wonder Years reboot. Uh, and they announced over the weekend that he would no longer be a part of that uh, because of inappropriate conduct on set. Now, exactly what he did is not known. We, it has been reported though, Jason, that there were at least three different allegations or complaints. So uh, Fox did an investigation into this and their findings, uh, they decided Fred can, Fred can no longer uh, be a part of this thing. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it's adding to the list of people. They were like, oh, really? You too? Yeah. That's it. I know. It's, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Finally, folks, come back to the TV if you haven't seen this. this well, now she's a lady. The teen daughter <laughs> of the late Anna Nicole Smith paying tribute to Janet Jackson at the Kentucky Derby this weekend, right? Kind of a, a really sweet moment uh, because Danny Lynn, Anna Nicole Smith's daughter, of course, like you said, she's grown up now. That's her and her dad, Larry Burkhead. But pay attention to what she's wearing because that outfit is the exact same one Janet Jackson uh, wore to a Kentucky Derby event back in the 90s. Uh, Larry purchased it for his daughter through a charity auction and Janet was actually in the crowd at the event over the weekend, saw Danny Lynn in the outfit and took a photo with her. It was really sweet. Oh, uh, to nice. See. Incredible to see how old Danny Lynn is now. I know it's it's again a reference, another old reference for me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Have a good week, my friend. You too, Jason. Talk to you later. More of these stories at TMZ.com. Did you see? Did you watch the Derby? No, I was camping. Remember? Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? What do you have against being part of nature? Don't. <laughs> Don't make me, don't make me call you out right now. Don't make I was in nature. It was 33 degrees when I was sleeping. Let me tell you, it was cold. <laughs> no, 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 just let her finish. Let her dig her own grave. Let her finish. I was! Oh, sure. Um, you're the same person that's acting really nice and happy about your camping trip. You're the same person that wanted Jeff to reject that vacation request, right? Yeah. <gasps> Say it out loud. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, he's gonna divorce me. <laughs> I just wanted one more night in my own bed. <laughs> <laughs> the Jason Show, helping Kindle's marriage for the past 12 months. That's right. <laughs> Jordan, she was joking. She jokingly said to Jeff, could you please like deny this? I said, but, if you oh. don't want to prove it, it's fine. Yeah, but you had a good time. I'm glad. <laughs> it was just very cold at night. Yeah, but it was I get otherwise. it. I'm with you. You don't have to. You and I, girl. Yeah. Jason, 33 degrees no, no, in no. a tent. No, it's, you know what? It's 72 at a Hojo. I mean, it's, you know. <laughs> Go to a Super 8, it's 72 degrees and there's a bed, yeah. <laughs> Next up, nominations are out for the Daytime Emmy Awards and there are a few surprises. Uh, no, we didn't get nominated, but Aww. these are the national. Aww. 
These are the national ones. We still won't be nominated for the other ones, but that's fine. The Kelly Clarkson Show leads the talk show pack, earning 10 nominations, including Outstanding Host. The show is also nominated and will compete up against the Drew Barrymore Show, live with Kelly Lee and Ryan Lee, the Today Show with Hoda and Jenna, and the streaming show Hot Ones. Well, hell, why are we in that category? We can do it, yeah. Now listen to this, though. This is the dish. The big surprise is that the Ellen DeGeneres show was not nominated. It's the first time in 18 years that the show itself didn't get a nomination for best show. The snub comes as you all know this. Ellen's wrapping up her 19th and final season. She stopped, by the way, submitting herself for best talk show host years ago, like Oprah did. Another snub, neither Ken Jennings or Mayim Bialik were nominated for best game show host. Both took over hosting duties on Jeopardy following the death, obviously, of Alex Trebek. Uh, and then if you want to watch it on, I don't know where it is now, the daytime Emmys will be handed out next month. Um, the Ellen thing here, I said this on the radio show, and I'm not trying to be snarky, because if you want to read people being snarky about Ellen, go to BuzzFeed. But uh, I don't blame the daytime Emmy people, because for Ellen's final season, she sure wasn't there a lot. No. And you know what I mean? It was, it was Ellen and Twitch. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It should have just been renamed. And I'm not throwing shade, I get it. She doesn't need it anymore, thus the reason she wrapped it up. But mm -hmm. if I'm the daytime Emmy folks, yeah, I'm not gonna, it was barely your show your final year. I know, there was one nomination that I was like, this is interesting. Uh, you remember the show Homework on Magnolia that they got in trouble, they got pulled? Because they oh. were doing some shoddy work, allegedly. Oh, that couple, the they were a married couple, right, yeah? Yeah, they're nominated for the like, how to <laughs> award. <laughs> I was like, oh. oh. Did y'all watch the show? Obviously, that voting group uh, extensively researched their, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next up, one of the most loved shows on Netflix is coming to America. Love on the Spectrum follows singles on the autism spectrum, uh, uh, on the autism spectrum as they look for love. I love the other version of the show. The first seasons took place in Australia, and now we're getting our first look at Love on the Spectrum U.S. My ideal partner would be somebody who can depend on me. We want to depend on each other. To have a lovely lady, that would be an absolute dream. Sometimes it can be challenging to find someone who doesn't write her off based off a diagnosis. Here I go. Sorry, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> you okay? I'm nervous too. I think you are so hot. <laughs> <laughs> You are so hot. <laughs> love on the Spectrum US premieres next week. How, how great is that? I oh, love that. Makes your heart so warm and fuzzy. I know. By the way, speaking of uh, streaming shows, we already talked about episode one. Episode two of I Love That For You on Showtime. Yes. It's just getting better. It's so good. It's the Home Shopping Network show mm -hmm. with uh, um, Molly Shannon. And what's her name? Vanessa Bayer, yeah, it's so good. It's so funny. So go watch it if you need something light. It's on Showtime. Next up, another show I'm looking forward to seeing again is David Letterman's My Next Guest Needs No Introduction. Now, we told you last week, Will Smith will be a guest on the show. Taped. Oh, I didn't even cue that. For the record, for the record, Aaron didn't tell them to groan. Yeah. Well, this morning we got a new clip. Uh, Dave talking to another guest, Ryan Reynolds, about his home life. Look. Who runs the show here? Blake runs the show. Mm -hmm. I would kind of really phone things in if it wasn't for her. Now, now let's just say, and it's I know this, is, this has happened, she would say, uh, I think I'm going to go visit my family for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, you have some time. Would anxiety set in then? I would, first off, never let her go visit her family. <laughs> um, <laughs> Second, I think, I think that's illegal. That's a, no, yeah, that is illegal. That's, I that's, that's kidnapping. A... No. Oh. I love this format for Dave. I've said this before. It's a great format for him. Getting out of the studio, the couple has three daughters together. Uh, the new season starts streaming on May twentieth. Yeah, if you if you couldn't hear, I this is I loved obviously Letterman in this format. Um, we do a lot of things. That's a tip of the hat because everyone knows I love Dave. Um, but this, taking him out of the studio, mm -hmm. he's so good. I mean, he, he wasn't really known for his interviews until later in the CBS years. And now he's just, he's one of the best. One Can of the best. Be That's right. We're going to take a break. We have a game time. We're opening up the mailbag and more when we return. Back in a moment, everyone. <laughs> Let's 
let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Well, it has been two years. Two years, as I said. Uh, it's been two years since I've been able to stand here and chat with our live studio audience. But before we do, I also want to acknowledge, I said, you know, gave a, a, a hearty thanks to Jeff and Ted and to the folks. But another uh, sign that things are back to normal and that life is what as it should be in this show is as it should be, is the return of our audience coordinator, Aaron Schwaberini, everybody. Come here. Come here. Here she is. It's Aaron, everybody. Take a bow, Aaron. Take a bow. There we go. There we go. Okay, now you can leave. Goodbye, Aaron. There we go. Yeah. I love you. I see. I got to act like I'm surprised. We see each other all the time. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, so let's talk to the audience. And, you know, if you talk to me, you may get a prize. Now, this is, I got to tell you, now, this gentleman's going to play the game a little bit later. But I, I said, I uh, uh, had a little joke about him earlier, and it's not factual. We're, he is actually here to see the show. Imagine that. And you were saying, you and I have a lot in common, and you picked two of the biggest things, which are? Uh, Disney World and Dallas. Oh. Okay. Give me. We have, uh, we have uh, crappy prizes to give away today. This is a, these are uh, gold glasses from the now canceled Fox show Empire. There we go. It's been two years. <laughs> we got to get rid of this crap. Okay. Yeah. Let's go up here. You look nice. What's your name? I'm Stephanie. Okay, go ahead and stand up, Stephanie, if you will, please. Where are you, where are you from? Uh, Brooklyn Park. Okay, now are you here on your own will or were you dragged here? Oh, I'm alone. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Thanks. No, the other one, the other big prize. Let's give that one right there. Now this, yeah. Now this is now this is very special. This is a home goods vase <laughs> from a different iteration of our set. There we go. There we go. Have a seat. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is the story behind that. So uh, we, we see, I don't know if Leo, there's too many cameras pointing this direction, but we have the little tchotchke wall over there. And uh, a few years ago, we did a national test. And when you go national, it's a, a different set of rules. And it used to be on that wall. Thank you, Leo. Uh, Leo so let's give a hand to director Leo, everybody. Anyway, that wall... That wall used to be filled with uh, photos, like photos of me and Katie Couric and whatever. And a Fox, a big Fox bigwig, a set guy, he's sitting over here with a little sig and he's uh, uh, doing, uh, doing some calculations. And he looks at the wall and he goes, you. And I said, yeah, he, you host the show, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, you know what that wall's gonna cost us? And I said, what? He goes, $3,000 a day because of copyright. Because of copyright. Oh. So I'm not kidding you. The, guy, the woman in charge, uh, a delightful lady that we call the general, she looks at some 12 year old and she goes, Go to Home Goods and find some vases. <laughs> right there, right there. Right there. Let's go up here. Come here, Kim. Now I'm going to pick out. Uh, oh, look, it's my feet, everybody. That was the delight. No. Again, poor Leo. Leo told us in the meeting, Jason. I'm not used to this format yet. So anyway, I'm going to pick somebody out uh, from our Jason Show fan club on Facebook. She watches. Let's step over here. These are the folks that watch the show no matter how bad it is. Give it up for Kim, everybody. Oh, Kim. Kim, thank you. Kim, how long? You've been here. How, about how many times have you been in the audience? Um, I don't even know. Um, yeah, I mean, countless like times. 20, 30? 20 or 30 times? Know. Well, then you deserve a really special prize. Let's do that, yeah. Let's go down here. Thank you, Aaron. This is, Kim, this is another vase from Home Goods that that intern got. There we go, there we go. Let's see here, let's see here. 
You, you and the, sh oh, I like this. Oh, I'm, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I love this. What's your name? Oh, thank you, Dana. Are you here on your own free will or where someone dragged you here? No, I'm on my own. Oh my goodness, okay. Give, okay, stand up for a second, if you will. We have another prize. Let's give, go ahead, Aaron, give me that one. What is this? This is a, a crappy movie called Instant Family. There we go. We just, right. yeah. All right. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We have truckloads of stuff in the back. Truckloads of stuff. Okay, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to call you. Stand up here. Come on, come down here with me. What's your name, my friend? Uh, Russ. Russ. Okay, now let me ask you here, free will or forced here? Forced. <laughs> have a seat. Just have a seat. Have a seat. But no. Nope. Willingly. Willingly, okay. How about that cleaning fluid? Go ahead and give me that cleaning fluid. That's right. Go ahead and give me that. There we go. There we go. That's me. There we go. There's our cleaning fluid there. There we go. Have a seat, sir. Have a seat. Yeah. Is he, you, is, is he spraying you? We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> deal. Some of the most unexpected moments in the seven years we've been on the air have happened while playing a game with our studio audience. Uh, well, it's been a while since we've been able to do this, so I'm really excited to say it's game time, everyone. There we go. Please uh, welcome our players to my left. Say hello to Lisa, everyone. And he loves Dallas and Disney. It's my new best friend, Wayne, everyone. Okay. So these buzzers do work. We did check them out. They used to be the applause button, but now they're back to being, uh, yeah. I know. Again, no budget. Now, we're going to put an emoji puzzle in the big board up there. The moment you, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> there, I love the audience. So anyway, uh, let's try to figure out the name of the movie that the emojis are trying to kind of spell out. And the minute you know, go ahead and buzz in. Okay, Leo, show us our first puzzle. Lisa. Batman. Batman is right. That's right. It is Batman. Okay, take a look. Leo, next puzzle, please. Lisa. Oh, sorry. You, air gun. <laughs> air gun is not right, but Wayne, you can steal. What do you think that's saying? Gun is in the word. Sequel coming out, Tom Cruise. Top gun. Not bottom, but. Top gun. Top gun, there we go. Okay, here we go. Look at the next puzzle. Wayne. Four weddings and a funeral. Four weddings and a funeral is right. Okay, I can't wait to see what Jeff used for this one. Here we go. Lisa. Baba Black Sheep? No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm totally not getting this. <laughs> Baba Black Sheep, the motion picture is not right. Wayne. Quiet Sheep. Quiet Sheep, the movie, no. Um, it is Silence of the Lamb. Uh, Silence uh, of the Lamb. That's all right. My daughter's name is Clarice. <laughs> what? <laughs> she just said her daughter's name is Clarice. <laughs> and you kind of look like Agent Starling. You kind of do. Okay. Anyway, we'll go to the next one. Here we go. Let's see it, Leo. Lisa. Psycho. Psycho is right, yes. <laughs> you're doing, you're redeeming yourself. Here we go, let's look at the next one. It's a movie, George Clooney, and a whole bunch of people. Lisa. Ocean's 11. Ocean's 11 is right. Okay, let's look at the next one. <laughs> Okay, if you guys get this one, you're pretty good. Think about it. Uh, I'll give you a hint, and that is Billy Crystal. 
Lisa. When Harry met Sally? Yes, oh. yes. Oh. I don't. I don't even That's actually. That's the first thing that came to my head. Well, that is right. I, and I'm trying to figure that, that, that out too. Okay, oh, salad. Oh, I'll have what she's having. Yep. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Let's look at the next one. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's a really good one. Wayne. Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast is right. Yes. Okay, a couple more. Leo, next one, please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lisa. Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids is right, yes. And that unfortunate uh, dress scene. Okay, a couple more. Let's go to the next one. Oh. Lisa. The Devil Wears Prada. Yes! I know. I know. It's all right, Wayne. It's all right, Wayne. Final one. Here we go. Wayne. Rocket Man. Rocket Man is right. Congratulations to both players. You're both taking home some swag. What is this? That goes to her. Oh, that goes to you? That goes to Wayne. Oh, look, you get a little blanket from the Great North. Cool. It's a show that I don't think is on anymore. There we go. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody, back in a moment. What is that? to check in with you guys to see what you're saying. And that means, Leo, open up the Jason Show mailbag. Well, the first question comes from uh, Ornia. That's a beautiful name. Hi, Ornia. Uh, did you get to eat for free when you worked at Red Lobster? Um, no. I think we got, we got a disc. No, I don't think we did. I think we got a discount. Mm -hmm. But I do know we got to eat all of the Cheddar Bay biscuits that we wanted to. That's right. Yeah. Bloop. Um, so what <laughs> we would do is if we worked a double, we would uh, cut the biscuit in half, put marinara on it, and cheese from the salad bar, and make a little pizza. And that's what we would do. If we worked a double, we couldn't leave. We had to be resourceful. I get it. I've worked at plenty of restaurants. Yeah, and then I will admit, um, there was a little bit of thievery. Um, I was working, it was, I was very young, and I, and I went in the freezer with my manager, it was his, their, his last day, and we went in and we went and we got the fudge overboard brownie from the freezer and, and ate, it was called, called fudge overboard, and we ate the entire pie, like the entire pie. So, I owe Red Lobster like $20. Anyway, up next, in response to our discussion about chicken fingers, Rachel says, which is a funny sentence all by itself, Rachel says, I am so mad. I went to Red Wing and we ate at Randy's. I had the salad bar, it was very good, but then the table next to us got the chicken strips, and now I know what Kendall is talking about. Yeah. Y'all think I'm a liar? Is it? These, they're that good. They're amazing. By the way, they have a great salad bar, too. But I yeah, like the chicken strips are phenomenal. Oh, at Randy's. 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 You can get them at the drive-thru. Get ranch. Ranch, ranch, ranch. Okay. Oh, it's a drive-thru kind of situation? You can. It's very old school. Like, you can go in, diner, or you can drive-thru. Okay. This uh, next one comes from Molly. Hi, Molly. Molly writes, my husband says that... <laughs> My husband says you are the fisherman in the new Minnesota lottery commercial, which, which catches a 30-inch stick. I say no way. Well, we had our research team dig this commercial up. Let's look at it here. Mm -hmm. No! I wish I looked like that. Uh, He's very broad. Look at, he's very manly. Look at that. I, manly. that would, they would never hire me for that. No, no, that's not me. No. Well, that's why they thought it was you. Yeah, maybe that. <laughs> that's kind of, I mean, just a little bit. That's a big beard, though. I mean, you know, that's a substantial beard. That was a manly man that's beard. That's very manly, yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you thinking that, but no. Because we actually have video of me fishing. So this is me in 2018, yeah. There's, it's just a little different. A little different. 
I mean, the similarities are there, but yeah. You look a little less sure. I, I yeah. I, that was Travis from, uh, he does all the fishing shows for uh, Ron's network. You know, oh, Ron yeah, Shara. Ron mm -hmm. Shara, yeah. Finally, a comment from YouTuber, Rainwater is Tasty 32. <laughs> Which, by the way, is the best name ever. Uh, Rain, Rainwater is Tasty 32 writes, hey, Jason. <laughs> Hey, Jason, I love the show. I think I saw your engineer, Brad, on an A&E show called Accused. <laughs> he plays the judge. Well, let's take a look. So here comes Brad, or I'm sorry, the judge. Here we go. Where is he? Right there. Oh, my gosh! Oh, my goodness! Okay, Leo, do we have a side-by-side? -side? Let's look at this. Let's do... Oh! <laughs> Brad is moonlighting. <laughs> that's, that's why the lights are out behind me. Brad's moonlighting on A&E. Oh. Nice. He looks so nice, doesn't he? I th yeah. Anyway, yeah. finally, wow. in response to Kendall's trip to Bachman's, Linda says Kendall needs to be a lunch lady coming up next. Okay, I did this, mm -hmm. I think, in like season two or three. I was yeah. a lunch lady. It is a lot of fun. But the kids, they... They, They'll hold nothing back. Oh, they will hold nothing back. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, why are you here? Hello, old man. Hello, you know. They're going to call me an old yeah. man? No, I'm saying what they said to me. Oh. I mean, they were, you know, delightful youngsters. But, I yeah. Just, I, I want to go on pizza day. Yeah, so then I started judging back to them. You know, they would pick something like, why are you picking that? You know, they didn't appreciate that. But, yeah, anyway. So I think you would do really well. I think I'd be an excellent lunch lady, I too. think you would, too. I think you would Thank be. Thank you. Yeah. I won't cook anything. Bad. Still getting over Brad. Anyway, and that's the Jason Show mailbag. If you have a question, write us a message on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Our handle is Jason Show TV. And uh, who knows, your question, comment, uh, advice, whatever, could end up right here on the show. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after. This. Back in a moment. That looks just like Brad. That is frightening. It is time for the world's shortest segment. Hello. In early morning on Broadway, nominations were announced for this year's Tony Awards, and they, forget the, there were some huge snubs. Listen to this. The musical A Strange Loop leads the way with 11 nominations. Other best musicals include MJ featuring the music of Michael Jackson, Billy Crystal's Mr. Saturday Night, Paradise Square, Six the Musical, and Bob Dylan's Girl from the North Country. But look at the snubs. Funny Girl was nearly shut out with no best revival nomination or nomination for star Beanie Feldstein. SJP and Matthew Broderick were also shut out for their revival of Plaza Suite. Woof, the, the, the funny girl thing, it's been ripped as far as reviews. Very, very sad. We're gonna take a break. The surprise goodbye when we return. Back in a moment. <laughs> It is time for the surprise goodbye. As you know, we don't know what's in this segment until right now. Today, today's six pack abs without the crunches. A guy in England had abs tattooed on his own belly. Look at this. It looks real and many people thought it was makeup to the tattoo artist till the tattoo artist shared the transformation on TikTok. By the way, this took two days to complete. I know, please. I'd rather just have blubber. I just, you know, I'd rather just, just I would rather just have what I have. It looks Not, like a science project. That's, that, come on. You're gonna, and then when you get older, it's just gonna <laughs> sag. <laughs> And it's, it's gonna, gonna look like, like little loaves of bread just kind of <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> Six pack down south. Yeah, hey. I don't. I, I mean, it'll, it's gonna be good for like 15 years, <laughs> and then just nature's gonna take it down. Just Sorry. yeah, yeah. 
Tomorrow on the show, one of the top chefs in the Twin Cities joins us in studio. Chef Ann Kim is here to chat about, yeah, I love Ann, I love Ann, to chat and cook something delicious from her latest restaurant, Suki and Mimi. So uh, Ann's always a good time. Thanks to this audience. Yeah. They're back. If you want tickets, go to the Jason Show Facebook page and click tickets. You're in by 9.30, you're out by 11.30. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're a bully, if you're a kid and you're being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.